Tonight, I'm here to tell you why I am that candidate. First, I am a sore loser. <laughs> All right, Saturday Night Live turns on Hillary Clinton this weekend. The once solid frontrunner may be preparing to pull out of this race, although she's busy campaigning right now. Uh, she's fighting for a prize that few believe at this point that she can actually win. Obama has a nearly insurmountable lead in delegates and has turned his attention right now. He's going squarely at John McCain. But Hillary's pressing ahead in West Virginia and Kentucky, where she is favored to win uh, West Virginia tomorrow night by a huge margin. So if Hillary has to exit, the question now is how and when does she do it to best strategize her next political move? Let's see what today's A-list has to say about it. Jason Rowe is joining me from Washington, D.C. He's a Republican strategist. Kirsten Powers is a Fox News contributor and Democratic strategist. Ryan Smith is a BET talk show host and entertainment and sports attorney. Griff Jenkins is Fox News correspondent. So welcome all. Uh, Kirsten, let me go to you first on this one. What do you, what do you expect from Hillary? What's her next move? Well, I, I mean, I expect she's obviously going to, you know, tomorrow night have a big win. And, and the question is whether she wants to, after that, start thinking about dropping out or she wants to try to rack up as many wins as she possibly can so that she has the most to bargain with. You know, she can, she can get the most votes to say, to get whatever it is that she wants. Maybe she wants to be vice president. Some people think she does. Some people think that she doesn't. Whatever it is, maybe she wants to run again next time and she wants to be able to look back and say, I got, you know, I, I beat him in the popular yeah. vote or I came close to being in the popular vote. That's it's really a question, and you just divided them that way. It's a question of, of how much she thinks she can get right now right. or whether she puts her eggs in the basket of what counts for the most in the future. And I don't know how much leverage she really has with Barack Obama if he clearly wins the superdelegates. What does she offer him? She has lever No, she would have leverage with superdelegates who would then, you know, would be talking to Barack Obama and saying, look, you have a problem winning over, you know, white working class voters, blue collar voters. Could she possibly help you? It sounds like Barack Obama's not particularly open to this, but I just think she's preserving her options. She's just trying to make sure she's playing with the strongest hand possible. Now, let me go to Jason in Washington. Jason, what do you think about everything that we're talking about here? What's the well, next move, in your opinion? Hey, as a McCain supporter, I hope she fights like hell and goes all the way to Denver in August for the convention. <laughs> Um, you know, if I were her, if I were advising her on what's best for her, I would, uh, after she whoops on Barack in West Virginia with what seems like it's going to be a 20-plus uh, point uh, win, you know, I, I would take that as the opportunity to uh, very gracefully, uh, while she's on top, uh, pull out of the race, endorse Senator Obama, and then become his number one cheerleader and start traveling the country on his behalf. And I right. think it's a good calculated decision because if he has another uh, Jeremiah Wright type of implosion during the course of the campaign and becomes unelectable, it's not too late for the delegates at the Dem uh, Democratic Convention to her turn to her. Right. Boy, and she will have dramatic. engendered a, a lot of goodwill from uh, the base for exiting on a high note and supporting uh, who she believes to be the nominee. Ryan, uh, Nancy Pelosi and Chris Dodd added their list, their name to the list of people who have said, in this case, they don't want a dream ticket. They don't want them to run together. Right. I mean, the, the Democratic leadership has abandoned her in a big way, from right. Kennedy all the way to this to this statement. What do you think she has to go on right now? I, I think she has very little to go on, and I think I, I couldn't agree with Jason more. I think she needs to drop out after she wins those states because she's looking at her best at that moment. Mm -hmm. The problem is no one is really willing to support her, and her negativity rating in the public is just sky high. At this point, if she gets out, she can still preserve that. She can support Obama. But, you know, she, she'd look at you right now and say, I've got a huge popular vote. Mm -hmm. I've won a lot of major states. So who is to tell me, Griff Jenkins, uh, that I haven't run a very competitive race and that I shouldn't stay in this? That's right. An historical one as well. Powers Curry, if I'm wrong, she's owed two things. One is a graceful exit when she decides to do it because of what she's done and haven't come this far. And she's owed a good deal. And she's about to slaughter it in uh, West Virginia. She's like right. 40 points, 35 points. Mm -hmm. And then Kentucky. She might win Puerto Rico. Who knows? Probably not Oregon, but her, her leverage goes up right now. Don't get out. Why would you get out? Make she's still, she's still momentum is, is tough, though. I think when she, you know, she's sitting on that win tomorrow night, if that's what happens, it's going to be very tough for her to look at her husband and, and say, oh, you know, I guess we get out now, right? We're going to see. Yeah. All right, we'll be right back. There's much more ahead on the live desk today. All right, here's our bit of history question for you today. For what political office did actor Alec Baldwin run in the past? 
All right. Well, it was for the student body, okay? But he ran for the, as president of George Washington University. That's what experience he's had so far. He lost by just two votes. Is that nail biter? All right. Well, he's a man of many, many roles. But is actor Alec Baldwin pondering a real political run this time? That's what the 30 Rock star told 60 Minutes correspondent Morley Safer. Take a look for yourself. There's no age limit on running for office to a degree. Something I might do one day. All right. Intriguing. Let's see what our A-list has to say about this. Uh, you know, there's a big elephant in the room when it comes to Alec Baldwin and any political aspirations. So actually, before we do this, let's pull this up and listen to it. Take a look. So you better be ready Friday, the 20th, to meet with me. So I'm going to let you know just how I feel about what a rude little pig you really are. You are a rude, thoughtless little pig. If you go through the things I've gone through in the media, like this thing with my daughter, there's only one thing that comes to mind initially, that is how my daughter must have felt to have this played out in public. The second thing I realize is you can pretty much bet everything you own that I would never leave another voicemail message for my daughter that wasn't just like something out of a Rodgers and Hammerstein score. I'm sorry. I am so confused. Uh, is he the victim in the phone call message that he left for his daughter? Is that what he's suggesting? He here? is the victim. Nobody could have expected that to go to the public. No, but really, uh, he, he, he has that personality. He's not unlike a lot of actors who have big egos, and they feel sort of like anything they do is just sort of a private conversation when they want it to be and not private when they don't want it. You know. So for him, here's the thing I say about Alec Baldwin running for an office. People love actors. When I first heard Arnold Schwarzenegger was running, I, I laughed out loud, honestly. Right. But look there at him now. Is. Governor of California, right? Alec Baldwin could do it. He could. Yeah, but this is a big deal. This phone call is a big deal. And, it's, and anybody who runs against him is going to make sure that this gets played all the time. Jason Rowe, uh, you're a strategist, a political strategist. What would you tell him, if you were working for him, to do about this phone call? Well, first, um, the victim here is me because I am a big Alec Baldwin fan as an actor, and every time I forget the stupid things he says, he has to say them again. We all are. We're all uh, talking. I mean, he's a very talented actor. Right well, yeah, if you remember, when that story broke, they were even talking about he wasn't going to return to 30 Rock, so there was right. even at a, a moment there that Hollywood wasn't even willing to embrace his values, let alone um, you know, uh, voters, 600,000 or so in a congressional district that would have to decide. However, he does have one opportunity. Uh, I believe he's from Congressman Vito Fasella's district, and so uh, given what's going on right is there, really? uh, timing oh is everything gosh. in politics, and he might have an opportunity oh right goodness. now. Yeah, uh, that, that is priceless. Kirsten, is this a guy that you want uh, representing the Democratic Party in his district, even if it is I think that, that district? Yeah, I think, I think that phone call obviously would be a big problem, but that re what he just said on 60 Minutes just made it so much worse because it's just... He, he's so out of touch with reality, and I, I, it was very kind of twisted, actually, listening to it. It's just thinking, okay, you just said how bad your daughter would feel. Now, how bad your daughter going to feel now that she just heard you say this? I mean, yeah. is, do you have any consideration? And that, oh, child? I would never leave her yeah. anything that wasn't right. I thought, how about that? Yeah. When he says that, every time I hear it, and I've heard it a gazillion times, mm -hmm. when he calls his child a rude little pig, yeah. it, it goes right through me. Oh, Can you imagine normal? calling one of your. Well, <laughs> Griff, you would around. never call your child. No, no, of course I haven't. Is. That's ridiculous. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't this guy uh, supposed to move to France after Bush won the second term? Yeah. Like, I thought he was supposed to live in Paris or something. He's well, like, well and you know, now, please, now that we know he... Uh, do it. Ahead, we know he lost the uh, student body president uh, vote by two uh, two votes. We know why he was so upset about the 2000 election in Florida. Yes, because he's <laughs> yeah. been there, right? He has experience. Yeah. He knows what that feels actually, like. Actually, I'll, I'll follow up on that. I was the student body vice president in my high school, so maybe I can run against him. Hey. <laughs> Although I'm not from New York. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know. Kirsten, well, let's just assume that, that Alec Baldwin wants your advice on, on how to get past this. I mean, he did have a golden opportunity right there. Yeah. He, he could have said, this, you know, I, I've never said anything like that in my life. I don't know what I was thinking. It's the most, you know, but he didn't take that opportunity there. Yeah, well, that was a huge missed opportunity. I guess if he's asked about it again, so again, I would coach him to answer it in an entirely different manner and to be very contrite and more concerned about his daughter's feelings and to really acknowledge, you know, and give some sort of context for it, I guess. Maybe he was going through a very difficult time and something. Right. But it's just he's already, he's done that, then he's and then he's tried to make us feel sorry for him for it. It's just so weird. Not a great. So weird. All right, we're going to keep an eye on that story. We'll let you know if he decides to run uh, for Vito Pacella's uh, district, <laughs> according to Jason. Boy, life is stranger than fiction, folks, isn't it?